And while Sparrow is building up his defenses here, uh, he throws these down, and really all that these manage to achieve is just to slow down, at the very end of the map, the B Raven battleships that are coming in this massive wave. Uh, they'll stop and destroy all those towers there, which doesn't take him too long, but it's long enough to distract them so he doesn't have everything coming in at once. Cataclysmos gets his uh, Wrathgazer paralyzed, brings in a second one so he can suck up that bird. Then he's going to go ahead and grab hold of the battleship as soon as it's in range. There we go. And he's also going to make use of uh, Portal Nexus. Uh, he's going to set up uh, one or two of those somewhere and uh, jump those guys around. He's also making use of uh, his unit's ability to heal near next to an allied building, which is a power well there. Uh, they're going to, he turns the leech guns on and off using a sacrifice card to bring in another death ray. There it is. And he's going to keep bringing those in until I believe he has nine of them. So he'll have plenty of firepower and he's going to keep turning the leech guns on and off letting his units heal in between so that way he can have the extra 50% uh, damage that upgrade 1 offers and I believe upgrade 2 turns that 50 into 100% extra damage for each shot while the leech guns are charged. Sparrow flies up with his army of fallen sky elves and dropship. Gonna wait here for the death ray to show up so he can clear this last orb. Gonna do a little buffing on his death ray. Life weaving at the appropriate time here to reduce 50% of that bandit gunner's uh, damage, which is really uh, smart on that because those guys do a lot of damage. So he casts another one there, survives the double cannon, and then takes him out. On Cataclysmos' side, he's putting in another portal nexus so he can jump those wrath gazers to where he needs them to defend. All of his wells are dried up now. All of his resource boosters have pulled the energy out. Now Sparrow has his fourth orb, so he's going to start working on developing his ultimate force. All the while going and taking out those raven ships as they come in. He'll just fly the dropship and the fallen sky else around to take those out as needed. And on Cataclysmos' side, it looks like the Death Ray Armada is getting ready to move out and take uh, take hold of that middle island there. The use of life weaving, um, blood healing, and uh, Surge of, or not Surge of Strength, Unholy Power, I'm sorry. Unholy Power is uh, very important. Uh, that's something that he makes a lot of use of. Both of these guys are making excellent use of the, all of those spells. And also something to note on Captain Sparrow's uh, replay is that he is using the Fallen Sky Elf's special ability, Visions of Despair, whenever he has the opportunity to on those uh, battleships and so on. And now he's going to be doing similar as to what Cataclysmos did earlier with the Rifle Cultist, except that he's going to be bringing in um, Necro Furies, so he can uh, sacrifice those to his Decomposer and to create card charges for his Death Ray. Because really the best way to finish this map, regardless of the color, is just flying units. You just want to mass flying units, because uh, any flying unit pretty much can attack ground units and air units, whereas not every... Uh, ground unit is going to be able to attack a flying unit, and there are plenty of flying units in this game, and they're just more versatile. A flying unit's a lot more versatile in this game, for this map anyways. And Sparrow did cheat a little bit by bringing in uh, a Ravenheart, but I guess it's not a, a you know, it's not necessarily any color, but uh, he would have just probably thrown in another Death Ray or something, so he used what he had available, so can't blame him for that, for that, even though this is a full shadow replay. Cataclysmos is going to finish up all the defenses for the island there. 
Going to take over that power well and park his death rays so that way they can get healed. He's going to be doing the death ray or the leech gun trick again. Something important on death rays for all of you shadow players. Do not forget to turn those off. Even if you get them fully charged, you want to shut the leech guns off because you will decimate your own troops as you're traveling along. Something good to combo them with is an overlord uh, or some other unit that can regenerate HP as it attacks. Sometimes Ashborn Pyro will work okay so long as you can have plenty of things for him to attack. He's a much more squishy unit, so it's not the best of strategy. But Cataclysmos brings in some Void Maw, and he has them fully upgraded, so their special ability no longer costs 200 power, but their special ability will instantly kill whatever unit you use it on. Uh, he successfully does it on a few of these, but I think a little micromanagement issue uh, caused him to lose the greater portion of them because they are a land unit, or a ground unit, so that way they are susceptible to the Raven ship's uh, large cannons. And those guns just do horrid damage to ground units and buildings. Runs over here, and here's where he loses. I think he successfully used one of them, and then the other one got blew up by the uh, the guns. So I think it it probably would have been better to have spread them out a little and uh, tried to use them that way. But both of these guys in these um, ending moments and things here, they're both making use of blood healing, which is another important card for this uh, map or for this strategy. Is because you've got a big group of units there, um, and if you sacrifice one of them, you heal every one of them around it. So long as it's dying, uh, it'll just drain the HP from it. And while Cataclysmos has ended the map, uh, Sparrow's replay is still finishing up here. He's going to go ahead and take out the last of the units and defenses on this map. Then he's going to head back for some healing before they all arrive. Throw down a life, uh, <clears throat> a furnace of flesh there to take advantage of the life points of these units that he's sacking to help bring in his void power. Because you can see right now. He's about 400 or so power, so he's a little power constrained at the moment. And now you see on his mini-map all of those Raven battleships are coming in at once, and uh, he's going to have to try and fend them off here. He's going to take out these big groups and everything, going to buff up as much as he can on some of these. And then this southern group here uh, is going to run into his life stealers. Of course, staying out of range because they've got those extremely long range guns. And it's just going to take that pair uh, a while longer to get moved up and go ahead and take out his orb and everything. But it's nice to have those two delayed instead of showing up with the mass of everything else. So there was uh, some purpose behind that. I don't know if that was his intended purpose, uh, but it is what ultimately happened there. Something also to note on Death Ray is that it is one of the few flying units that does have uh, an XL attack. And although it doesn't have a really huge XL attack, it um, when it's fully leech gunned up and everything, it can be a, a unit to reckon with. And it works really good on these Raven battleships because, of course, they're XL units, just like the uh, Death Rays themselves. He's going to fly down all of his units here, summon in a Fallen Sky Elf so he can go ahead and Visions and Despair this last one. I guess he's hoping to make him run away, but uh, <laughs> he'll do that and take this guy out in a couple shots. And that is all. Uh, thanks again to Sparrow and Cataclysmos for your wonderful Pure Shadow replays of Ocean Expert. Uh, this has been Minoxin. Hope you found it informative and enjoyable. Goodbye.